What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Long Box Sessions. I'm your host, Alex Dandino. And I'm Josh Griffey. As always, catch us on all your socials. Please leave a review, rate, and subscribe. That is not the order I normally say that in, but I'm changing it up because for God's sakes, what else do you have to do? Pause this show, go rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, Let us know how you feel, if you like the show, if you hate the show, if you feel medium about the show. Any of those things are appropriate to write in the review area. But in any sense, if you do it, it really helps our metrics. It would be wonderful if you did, especially in these trying times, folks. We hope you are doing quite well. Um, Also, please catch us on YouTube at Nerd Alchemist. That's with an S. That's plural. And then uh, catch our other show, Film Alchemist Podcast. Please. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up. We're finishing up this month with the pod is held captive. And next month, starting in May, the pod edits genetics. Oh, yeah. Edits genetics. We got a lot of fun stuff. The pod's going to learn Kung Fu in June, I believe. Uh, You know, my birthday's in June, so maybe I'll make you. Maybe that'll be what we'll do in June. I'll make you do, like, the movie that you hate but I want to talk about. So we'll figure it out. Come over. It's fun. It's fun. fun. All right. Business aside, we hope you are staying safe out there, my friends. Uh, For those of you who are about to be unlocked down, congratulations. Go out there and wear a mask. I don't know. Uh, But in any sense, please be safe. Please respect social distancing, all that good stuff. I am still locked down. Griffey, are you guys? Oh, yep. Uh, We're locked down, but I think it's lifting May 1st, which is right around the corner. Uh, But you know how it is. Like, my wife's a nurse, and she's like, yeah, they'll unlock stuff, but a lot of places aren't going to just, like, jump right back in. Uh, So, yeah, you know, we're we're on the verge of a lightning, I think. Yeah, we're locked down until May 15th. I have a feeling Gavin Newsom and uh, Mayor Garcetti are going to extend that out in Los Angeles. Which uh, is probably why, uh, which brings me to the idea I had for the show tonight. Um... For those of you, uh, this is going to be a little inside baseball, but for those of you who work in the business, which is the TV and show business, this business of show, I wanted to know, there's been so many articles written in the last like two weeks about how we're all going to get back to work and how they're going to keep doing scripted with a bunch of like, and there's like four or five different proposals out there. I read an article from Variety last week with the two, the two guys who ran a production company who like almost didn't want to be named but then they ended up being named anyways like with their proposed idea which is an insane i which is insane this is my thing though i don't think that's going to really happen anytime soon i really don't think we're going to get back to physical production for a lot of things until january of next year to be honest with you particularly particularly unscripted i think that's probably insane but you know I work in I work in unscripted, and I think that we'll probably all be back to work a little sooner than that. But I also think that's because we have smaller crews, we have mm-hmm. less union issues, so on and so forth. Uh, but it presents an interesting opportunity, and it's something I wanted to talk to you about tonight, Griff. Mm-hmm. I think that this particular moment in, uh, I guess, human history, but also the history of uh, pop culture, is really really fascinating. Like. This summer has literally been canceled. Yeah, no man. Comic-Con, no any of no any of the none of the things that normally would be you know no no summer tent poles, nothing nothing that seems exciting. Everything has been pushed back like a year. Right. But the mediums that should be thriving right now are stuff like not necessarily comics, but maybe comics, but more importantly animation. I feel like this is the time. It's prime time for animation, man. This is a great opportunity. For one, from a practical perspective, every animator who works for a major studio can easily work from home. I actually have friends who work at DreamWorks who all work from home, and this has literally inspired some of them to move across the country so they don't have to be there anymore to just work satellite. <laughs> like That's the kind of stuff that I think is really fascinating. So to me, this is like prime time for uh, – because some people have talked about this as being like another writer's strike. And I hesitate to say something that severe because the writer's strike was a horrible thing that happened. But some good came out of it, maybe. I don't know. But I wouldn't say this is exactly like a writer's strike. To me, I see this as a huge opportunity mm-hmm. for animation writers to really up their game and really get a chance to do stuff that maybe they haven't been able to do before and us to see stuff we've never seen before because, let's be honest, what the hell else is on, you know? It'll be interesting. Yeah, I mean that. 
I don't know enough about the production of animation to know how much money all this costs. But let's say in an ideal perfect world, right? The lone madman creator stuck in his apartment just with whatever, you know, he's has at his disposal to eat. And he's just right. in this like fever pitch, you know, like uh, at the end of Little Women when she's just writing day and night by candlelight to get the novel done. Right. right? So that version right. of animation, I'm, I'm fascinated by that. Again, I don't understand enough of the production. I'll be honest, to be like, I don't, what I don't any of that And I've really it. tried. But yeah, right. I know it takes it, def it definitely takes longer than physical yeah, production man. in a lot of respects. There's a lot more to do, obviously. People are actually physically drawing these items. And I think, I mean, South Park, we all saw that um, South Park documentary. They're the only shop in town that can really produce an animated television show in under a week. And that's simply because <laughs> they have very simplistic animation. It's great, but it's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I was thinking about this, though. And, like, the rare opportunity that we have is the big, like, think about, like, Marvel and DC. Like, we love those DC animated movies. At least I do. I think they're, like, I think 80% of them are absolutely wonderful. Sometimes they throw out a stinker here and there, but that's my opinion. It could be not, it might not be someone else's, but for instance, I did not love The Killing Joke. That was not my favorite. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That wasn't my favorite. They don't have a great track record of, hey, here's a classic tale you like. We added a couple extra scenes. Wink. Right. Those, that's usually where you find yourself going around. <laughs> it's interesting. The only one that I think actually adheres to the book strictly is The Dark Knight Returns. Mm -hmm. And it was very good. I think Peter Weller's an amazing voice for uh, Batman. Yeah, I thought that was great. But that's really kind of like the only one. I think, though, that, like, for instance, ever since Marvel Cinematic Universe has become so big, the, DC, the, the Marvel animation side has really, like, streamlined. Like, for instance, the right after that, an, uh, the first Avengers movie came out, mm -hmm. they changed. They, like, threw out that entire Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon, which I thought was wonderful. And I love the animation style for a much more, uh, like, in line with realism and in line with the actual movies, so on and so forth. I was really disappointed by that. And I also didn't really like that cartoon very much. But... I was really excited when they said they were going to finally do like Modoc and Howard the Duck and some of these other animated shows for mm -hmm. Hulu, which I was like, well, that's a fucking rad idea. I'd love to see. I'd love to see a Howard the Duck show. I'd love to see a Modoc show. Mm -hmm. um, but my thought is maybe they could go a step further with that. Like now that like physical production for Marvel movies is effectively shut down. What could take its place? Maybe Marvel animated movies of like classic storylines, sort of like the way they do, sort of like the way they do in the DC uh, DC animated universe. Mm -hmm. I think there's an opportunity there. So my question to you is, if they were going to animate, let's say, let's start with three Marvel movies. Three, if they're going to do three animated Marvel movies, what Marvel comics would you like to see animated into a feature length film? Man, so these this is not a show. This is you're animating into a feature film. Let's start with feature film. We can get to shows, but I want to know if there's something that you desperately need to see as an animated feature. Uh Okay, is this characters or specific stories? Just anything I want, right? Anything you want. If they came to you and said, "Griff, here is all the Taco Bell in the world. Just sit here and now watch. Now we're talking. Now I can get. Just sit now here and I watch. Just sit here and watch these Marvel movies. Yeah, greasily slide into position. <laughs> uh, okay, so if I had my druthers, right? If I had my druthers, um, I think I I've always believed very much in Ghost Rider, and Ghost Rider often sucks. And you know, to try to make them work, they've done some really cool stuff. I like. They've tried Cosmic Ghost Rider now, all these kind of things, right? That's not Very necessarily fun. the vibe I dig on Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. There was a story I stumbled across a while back. I can't remember much about it, but I remember there was this really cool moment where we see all the Ghost Riders. Right. So all the Ghost Riders throughout times, right? So there was a Ghost Rider who was on a Mastodon. There's like uh, the Paul yeah. Revere ghost. Oh yeah, you know, the, it's like one of those. The, what is that called? Like Avengers 1000 or something like that. 1000 BC. It was actually BC. a Ghost Rider specific title, and I it might have been attached to a bigger event, but I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was there's just this page like, where you essentially yeah. turn and it's Ghost Rider in heaven. Like all the Ghost Riders are actually in heaven, and you're like, right. weird but cool, pretty metal. And then I know they were doing the you know Avengers like primal or 
you know, prehistoric Avengers at one point. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I think that was that like they, Mastodon, uh, got Ghost Rider, right? So yeah. I did actually start watching an animated show recently. I started watching that show Primal. Oh, okay. It's fucking unreal how captivated I was by that show, right? Love right. that show. But I was like, if you could take some of that kind of raw vibe, and it's real. The thing that's cool about Primal is how silent it is, right? It's just this caveman walking around in prehistoric times. He kind of talks and grunts, right? Uh, yeah. Sees his kids and wife eaten. Right? He goes to kill the motherfucker that does it. That motherfucking dinosaur has her kids eaten, and then they form this, you know, Kill Bill style tandem. <laughs> where now this caveman right. and uh, his dino mom are like, man, this sucks. Our families are eating, we're going to fuck people up. And they wander around quietly, and, you know, everything in prehistoric times apparently was very dangerous, and everything's trying to kill it. So it's these two, like, enemies turn friends that, that want to do that. But as the silence of the show. Is really cool, and I've always thought Ghost Rider is kind of this Western character would be really nice. rad. So something in the style of Primal, where it's really visual, it's really you know kinetic animation, right? But we so don't want, we like, don't do a lot. I don't want to do a lot of talking. I don't want to hear right. Nicolas Cage say that it's like having a hangover, you know, like none of that shit. I just want him driving around, seeing some fucked up shit. Bad people seeing right. him, and it's like, let's roll. Pen and stare. Boom. So you want Jendi Tartakovsky's Ghost Rider. Like a version of that. Yeah, like, I mean, I would watch him do anything at this point. He's earned yeah, that I mean, much I think that's me. fine. So, I mean, I don't know that that exact style is perfect, but that that the setup of that show, right? Like the, the, And it's really a pretty ballsy animated show to do. I, yeah. I, was, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that in the modern era. But I was like, that version of a Ghost Rider setup, I think, could be really cool. Okay. Wandering around just judging the fuck out of us, you know what I mean? Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Silently. Especially in these times. Silently. He just shows up on a, he just shows up on a Florida beach, beach and uh, just pennant <laughs> stares the hell out of everyone. He just walks up and it's actually just him pennant staring at the state line and Florida drifts the fuck off. <laughs> Wherever it lands, it's your problem now, yeah. That'd be fine. I'd watch that. I like that. that All right, what do good. you got? What are you interested Me? in seeing? You know, man, I've always wanted to see. I wanted. To, I've always wanted to see, and this is mainly for the voice cast. I've always wanted to see animated, true animated Civil War. Yeah, I think that's markedly one of like the most important comic book events in history. True, and the fa the fact that that. Captain America Civil War is what we got. And that is a lot of people's interpretations of what that book is. Like, yeah. I think that's the thing that bothers me is that people would go to that book and read like the first like four pages and not understand why it's not like the movie. Mm -hmm. And that like that's sort of that weird like reverse pollination that we're running into with people like our kids who are going to like grow up with these Marvel movies. Like that's their first experience with Marvel. Yeah, man. So I would love to see an animated civil war, like a true to form civil war animated book is a, there's a lot of great a and B plots throughout the story, but I also think it's my favorite version. This is weird. It's my favorite version of uh, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. He's like such an unbelievable piece of shit in the entire <laughs> thing. And it's hilarious how like he, everyone ch keeps trying to like come up with these redemptive qualities. It's also a great Spider-Man. Like there's a lot of like really awesome beats. And I, I feel like, Again, this is another reason I'm really excited actually for the What If series on uh, on uh, Disney Plus mm -hmm. because that'll be animated. You can see a lot of cool stuff. But I would love to see Civil War. Yeah. Civil War, I think, would be a Civil War. Would be I think would be really fun, but also really interesting, especially now because we haven't really gotten past the climate that Civil War was released in. So if anything, it's even more relevant now if you go back and read it. It's fascinating. Yeah, I wonder if Disney would have the fucking balls to drop that on Disney Plus. <laughs> right? Here's your adult. If they'd have just the war. fucking cajones. <laughs> They're like, no, go back to the airport. Uh, Sup, bro? Sup, Iron, bro? You know, <laughs> that's what you would get now on Disney Plus. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that'd be I cool. Think, I'd watch that. I'd like to see that. I, I that's like that's like my pie in the sky, like Dark Knight Returns from Marvel. I'd say. <laughs> okay, right on, man. I don't know. I'd watch what that. else? Uh, what do you, got? you know what I. Again, another character who's kind of in the works, but I think would be really well served 
probably more by animation than a live action, I think, is Moon Knight. Yeah. Because okay. I think the broken nature of his reality, you know, Legion is kind of the extreme version yeah. of what that show would be to me. Uh, and Legion does a really good job stylistically, right? Mm-hmm. So I think if you took something like that and you put it animated, though, you can really draw out the the kind of nature of this psychosis and, you know, the origin of Moon Knight's abilities. And you have yeah. this really cool, you know, just guy prowling the rooftops, fucking people up superhero. But I, I think right. that extra part of what makes Moon Knight great is that kind of mental illness subplot, right? And I think that becomes really more interestingly explored in an animated film. Definitely. That you can just push it so far to so many places. Right. I, I, I would be That's interested good. in seeing how they do that. I like that. Um, I think for another one I'd like to see is, uh, it's, a, I, I think I'd like to see actually a animated fantastic four film. Really? I, I, I <laughs> here's why, because every time we get these live action ones, like Shit sucks. it's not that they're hokey because, because they are, the that's charm. built in. Yeah. <laughs> but that's kind yeah, that's kind of the charm of fantastic four. Like, you know, it's kind of corny. I really and truly believe that it would be so, so cool if you got that whole origin thing out of the way. Like, if they decided to do animated origin, whatever, of Fantastic Four on Disney Plus to act as canon for the MCU and got rid of that up front and put it out there so everyone can just like sort of understand and disseminate that for this particular version of the fantastic four you could jump right into live action and not have to deal with any of that bullshit that <laughs> we constantly have to deal with well, i actually it's, think it's that'd become be a really the, smart uh, way to do it. it's become the this holy grail now right it is this yeah. chalice where it's like if you pick the right chalice you will be immortal forever if not you fucking die like every other bitch that's tried to make a fantastic four property because it honestly right. this is the thing fantastic four people they're really ingrained into the MCU, right? So the the Marvel comic books they're they're integral to so many things that have happened. Yeah. But I think honestly, Fantastic Four has sucked the vast majority of the time that they've existed, <laughs> right? Sure. And I I mean, there's some stuff I really like about them. Like I love Ben Grimm in the thing. Yeah. I think Reed Richards is the man who's lost in science is a little one note at times. There's very few times be. where Reed Richards is like, oh, what I'm doing is wrong. He's just like, Psh, it's not my fault. You guys are too stupid. I got to do this all by and, myself. And I'll be a bad dad and a bad husband and a bad friend. I think ever since the new Secret Wars, he's been much better written. Like, they've done a better job of making him less, like, science nerd and much more, like, holistic, like, oh, my God. Like, I've seen, like, crazy shit in this universe. Right. But that's neither here nor there. But I mean, that's a, like there. There's potential to rework all of them in a way that is interesting. Absolutely, you know. So I'm I'm all for the continued journey because I think right. there's going to be a really big hallelujah from a lot of us. Like if they just made a pretty good, because people go back yeah. and there's a lot of revisionist history. Like oh, those two Fantastic Four movies we got weren't that bad. I'm like the one where Galactus is just you know an interstellar fart cloud. They like, were bad. They're horrible. They're fucking yeah. horrible. Michael Chiklis is like the five foot eight thing. Like they're bad. I think th they're so. I bad. think the revisionist history comes with the fact that it's Chris Evans. I think had it not been Chris Evans, we would have like sure nineteen ninety two fan Fantastic Four that entire thing. But I mean, you like, see that all of that, and I think it's a good thing, it's just right? The truth. Like we see that now with the prequels and a lot of these movies. You see them as time goes on. The people who saw them as kids and are like, "Yeah, I saw that. It wasn't that bad." They grow older, and and the the you know the the tide shift, which is fine. But yeah, I would be interested. I just don't know. I would be interested in how the animation gives you a springboard to make it more inter interesting. I mean, I feel like there's just an opportunity. There's it's it happens a lot with, for me with animation. Is I feel like there's much better opportunity sometimes to it's it's a common it's a convalescence of things like for me like i love that doctor strange uh animated movie that like marvel lionsgate put out i thought i think that was really good and i also think it was really good because 
it was really emotional and it really dived deep into Steven's life. And I think that is the kind of thing that you want to see from anything, but particularly a fantastic four movie because they are kind of one note. They're a little corny. Like that's like, they're the first family of Marvel, so on and so forth. So give me that emotional beat. Give me that emotional fire that I want. And I think you're going to have something, you're going to have something cooking, but I think you got to start by getting out of the origin story realm. And if you really need to tell that origin story, start after everything. No, don't make me. No one ever again needs to origin anything. I'm convinced. I've always no. thought uh, this is all I'm going to give away because I've tried to crack this one myself, just like in my notepads. I think Temple of Doom is kind of where you're going, not Von Doom, not Temple of Von Doom, right? But Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, within yeah. that film, I was like, "There's the the mine cart, if you will, that I think you could ride down the rails and get somewhere you need to be with Fantastic Four." But that's neither yeah. here nor there. All right, what do you got? <laughs> For number three, God, man, Marvel's got so many properties out. They're already doing MODOK, right? We have so many X-Men things. So many X-Men things. So many. I know, and like I'm resisting the urge to say Jenny Tartakovsky doing like Wolverine. Like I already watched Samurai Jack. No, and that's the thing. They have cool anime Marvel. Uh let's see. So a Marvel character I like. They're already doing a Vision show. Vision would have been kind of interesting. Yeah. God damn. A Marvel story. Marvel that story. That we haven't worthy. seen a bunch and could actually add value to the universe moving forward. Yeah. That's the other thing I'd be into. Like, which of these characters then becomes... I mean, you could. I mean, you could also just say, you know, you want a nice, like a solid one-off. Like, you know... I mean, like, I, you know, on the Q&A on Friday last week, someone asked me it, who I thought would be a great writer, director, star for Immortal Hulk. Mortal Hulk would be a really cool animated movie. I mean, you know. Mortal Hulk would be a great anything, yeah. I mean, that'd be a great anything, but I think animated is what – I think animated would make it really cool. But that's that's me. That's my opinion. Stating it. Fact. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, let's see. So Marvel story. Because, like, the guy I always really want to spend more time with is Nightcrawler. He's kind of my right. Marvel guy that I'm desperate. I feel like I always just want more and more and more, and I can't get enough. But, again, the X-Men being so wildly oversaturated as they are, that kind of feels like a waste. So what if you took something like – fuck, what if you did something like Namor, right? Could you get something really cool out of Namor? You know what I mean? I mean, there's almost a version would, of primal you could do is just Namor, right? And that actually might work much better than. So if you did Ghost Rider as Vampire Hunter D, right? Let's say that. Or you yeah, did okay. Namor as Vampire. Like you could kind of interchange those two because they're kind of similar characters to me. So right. Ghost Rider is this, you know, spirit of vengeance riding around in judgment of us. Namor is kind of the same thing. He's constantly judging the surface world while dealing with the monsters of the deep and trying to you know, be this superhero for this other world. So that's right. What if you could find a way to make Namor really fucking sing? But Namor, again, has that problem with me. Like, every time Namor starts talking, I just go, enough, enough, shut up. Like, that's how I read Namor in my brain, usually. It's usually this kind of just, ha, I'm regal, ha, I'm a good fighter, ha. It is super pompous, but maybe you're on That's fine, because that's that's his, his vibe, right? But... Right. How do you, but if you f- bring that in? But if you found the right hook, you could hook it in with my animated Fantastic Four because they are intertwined. Right. Or you could take Namor all the way back to the Ridge and do uh, do it with the original Human Torch. You could tell a nice like vintage. Yeah. He was part of the Invaders too. You yeah. could tell a nice. Sure, but you I could tell a. This is what you I could tell would a nice want, right? framed vintage story. Yeah, with for Namor. Sure. The theory I would want to do with Namor is let's take him all the way to the fucking barest. That's why Primal becomes. That's why I think Primal in general is so entertaining, right? Ghost Rider actually works really well. As Vampire Hunter D just flashed in my mind. That's a yeah. perfect setup for Ghost Rider because it's just a guy who is paranormal himself riding around on this awesome fucking robo horse, just fucking right. whipping asses, right? You know what I mean? 
Yeah. So Ghost Ghost Rider and Vampire Hunter D have this really cool vibe. Namor, I think, is actually the better uh, character to do primal with. Because this is the thing. Break down why Namor is cool, right? He is the less interesting Aquaman to me, right? He has a crew cut. He has wings on his yeah. feet, and he's underwater. Yeah, he and he has, might be stronger yeah. than Aquaman, right? I know most people think he is. It's not, he's a strong guy. Who is a dickhead and he's in the Illuminati? Fine, I'm saying start peeling this shit back. What actually makes an underwater king interesting? And to me, it's that is such a brutal, dark, cold, lonely environment, right? So to be the king of that world, right? In a way, it's almost like they they're a Satan like character, right? Shunned down into the deep dark, you know, coldest parts, farthest away from us. So this right. guy who rules. You know, because then we show, like, even in Aquaman, it's like, look at Atlantis. It's all lit up like it's fucking Vegas. And you're like, if that shit's way at the bottom of the ocean. The amount of dark and pressure. You know, there's a lot about that world that I think is actually a little more brutal and terrifying. So, okay. you know, instead of people riding seahorses into battle like the Momoa Aquaman, which decided to go maximum fun, which I thought was a great success for them, right? Like, that Aquaman really worked out. My kids think right. Aquaman is badass, and they won't hear otherwise in their five. I was 30-something until that movie came out. So, you're like, I had to go three decades of people being like, ah, oh, the fish fucker. You know? And then, like, all of a sudden, you're like, oh, Jason Momoa is pretty badass. Like, all right, cool. Like, yeah. And, you know, there were some of us that liked him a little bit, but, like, he was never popular. Fine. Strip Namor down, right? He is the fucking baddest dude in the harshest environment who's running this kind of medieval kingdom of, you know, might makes right. He's fighting monsters of the deep. There could be, I mean, there's more oceanic lore and myths that we could cover, right? So you almost turn him yeah. into this angrier hellboy of the ocean, right? Like he's just wandering around quiet. It almost becomes Silver Surfer-like, right? It's this guy just meandering through the deep, dark depths of this ocean. Trying right. to find his fucking place, but doing it through brutality. You know what I mean? Right. So maybe that maybe Primal's much better for Namor. But that's what I mean. If you just break Namor down to what is the coolest about him, it is the environment from which he comes. Namor himself is not really that cool. He's been involved in big events and he's been around for so long, he has great moments. But if you you right. know, if you like break him down to his core, you get like the best characters, you can tell me what Spider Man, Wolverine you can tell what makes those characters cool. Presser X. All of them. Like You can tell me why yeah. they're cool. Namor, it's like, tell me. Tell me. Even Human Torch, right? Tell me what's cool about him. He's fire. He has famous relatives, right? He's like a Rob Kardashian. Tell me. <laughs> like, what makes him special or cool? Right? So that's it's what that. I mean. I think that a, is the opportunity for God, Namor. Dude. That's an amazing idea for a Fantastic Four series. Make them turn them into the Kardashians. Kardashians. <laughs> like, that is a fucking hook right there, man. Like, yeah. turn it into almost a reality show. Like, forced upon them. I would actually think that'd be really cool, actually. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think that's the problem with Fantastic Four is they always try to set it around Reed and Sue. And they're, it's like, yeah, we yeah. get it. He's a shitty, terrible husband. Not just that. He's right. a shitty, terrible person who does not understand women and who like constantly yeah. neglects the people he loves. Well, he's like, an emotional black hole, that right? Again. So that's why I'm like, they always focus it wrong. Yeah. And the Kardashians are very much in that, that <laughs> mold. So yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think there's a lot of fun. I mean, that's what I mean. So the Marvel properties we listed, I think there's a lot of really fun, right? So you do Immortal Hulk, you get horror. Namor can kind of be horror. You know, mm -hmm. then you can get your kind of like swashbuckling adventure cartoon. You know, like you love, uh, you know, the Adventure Brothers, or whatever the fuck that show's called. They're called the Venture Brothers. Venture Brothers, yeah, not Adventure. They had to be clever. Venture Brothers, right? That's a Fantastic Four mold right there. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's like half the joke. In fact, there actually is a Fantastic Four pastiche in the show, and he is a horrible person the entire yeah. time. Yeah. So that's what but I mean. Like I think the I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And that's what I always would look for is what can the medium of animation bring that you can't right. get from, you know, a live action version. And I think that, you know, that highly stylized, you know, just seeing these unbelievably massive epic scale worlds. I think that's where you could 
could get some yeah, good stuff. that's where you can really make it sing. And I think throw a little style on there that isn't just, you know, CGI. And not to say that the CGI is not awesome. I mean, it's fun to watch. Again, we all saw Endgame. That was the coolest thing I've ever seen in a movie is just all of them fucking running after, going off to get it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. that was really cool. But there is something to be said for a little bit of style, a little bit of, you know, Primal's a great example. Primal's all style, you know? Yeah. That's what I mean. There's there's just things that animation are really good at doing. Yeah. You know, that you just you can't achieve in other ways. So that those are the heroes I would look for. Who okay. most benefits I can from see that, that being, right? I think I feel like Marvel's probably the one that would benefit the most since they have direct access through Disney Plus. Mm. But HBO Max has the DC universe, so I wonder if there's... What the fuck is HBO Max? Why is HBO trying to get me to sign up for another app? I already pay them. Because uh, they can. Am I going mean, to get access HBO to their Max fucking is, pro- programs? H- HBO Max is technically Warner Media, so it's like all their shit. Fuck them. But <laughs> Fuck them. They will get no more money from me. Fair enough. That's fine. I'm so money. fucking sick of having 15 fucking streaming apps. Here's my... I have all the streaming the, apps, and I always end up on just, like, Shutter, Criterion, or Prime. Always. It always happens. Fuck. If they came to you and said... It doesn't have to be uh, one of the big two, because I'm thinking of something else. Like, But if they came to you and said, Griffey... Would you write an animated series for this comic, for whatever comic book you want? What would you use? Sweet Tooth. Unequivocally, number one choice would be Sweet Tooth. Isn't that happening? I mean, I'm assuming everything's being developed right now. That that for I sure, so. I think, God, I just, I could see that being such a wildly fun animated show. I think it'd be fucking rad. There's man. so many animated I, shows I love that they already have like versions of. Or can I tell you the truth? I think, I think Jeff awesome. Lemire stuff particularly would be amazing animated. Like I think about Descender. Holy yeah. shit, dude! Yeah, Descender was kind of one of those. I don't feel like Descender ever all the way maxed out the story. You know what I mean? So if you took it into animation right. and got some extra seasons. I think you could really explore a lot more of what was going on. Like, the thing I love about The Sender is they kept it really personal to the Timmy model, right? But I think there's a lot of other world there that we could have had fun with. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think The Sender, I mean, there's there's just so many, like, I've always said, you could do live action, but I always just want to see, I want to see who gets cast, voice cast, too, for Sex Criminals. Sex Criminals. That's I think that's like I can't believe they haven't already made that into a fucking TV show. Like we're gonna watch fucking Sex in the City and all this other shit. Yeah. But you know, two people who blow their loads and stop time is just not okay for <laughs> that's not prime time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I, know, man. I, I mean, think that that's a perfect good. adult. I swim think show, Saga personally. would probably be the number one. I'm sure everyone's cracking yeah. that one right now. Saga, I think, would be pretty interesting to Saga see. Saga is just so perfect I don't, because of how wild it is just in the worlds and the characters. Yeah. It's always going to be yeah, hard I mean, to pull that off live in a way that's not mostly animated anyways. Yeah, I feel like design-wise, it's perfect for animation. I mean, oh, Fiona yeah. Staples is an amazing artist regardless, but it itself, like the design of the worlds in themselves, just speak for animation completely. But, True. you know. Yeah, there's there's know? a lot of good properties, man. But yeah, Sweet Tooth would be my first one I would leap at, right? If it nice. was non comic book, I've always wondered why I don't have more Vampire Hunter D in my life. It's always bothered me, right? Because I have the two movies, but they're not everywhere. They're harder to find than they should be. I have all the novel. I, uh, I have like seventeen of the novels. I have a lot of Vampire Hunter D novels. But I just I fucking yeah. love that world. It's this, especially now it's this kind of awesome gothic horror, but it's really sci-fi. You know what I mean? So it has mm-hmm. like everything you'd want for everyone. I'm like, why the fuck is that not everywhere? Right. So I think that one would be awesome. Uh, you know, Hellboy had some animated movies, but they weren't very good. They didn't really capture yeah, the Hellboy would be good vibe. animated. They were I'd like okay. To see Mike Mignol- I'd like to see more Mike Mignola animated. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's just so many. I, I always thought comic book to animation is a great medium transfer to me, 
right? I think so too. Because yeah. you don't have to do nearly as much adapting, I'd say, down. Like, yeah. you can sort of just adapt across almost. And also, it's all a these movies are essentially, like, Endgame is an animated movie for at least 50% of it. Yeah. At yeah. least. But, <laughs> and I think that's what makes, yeah, I would want to see that particularly. Yeah. I think that that is, I think in this time of, like, us being shut in our houses and not able to do, and particularly in show business, not Ooh. being able to work on physical productions I think that animation really should take advantage of the fact that there's a lot of people who own a lot of property and all they have to do is go to all they have to do is like literally go through their like list of IP and be like, oh, we own that. Let's just animate that. Well, the biggest show that never seems like it gets off the ground and I still don't know why is Conan. Conan has so many fucking amazing stories. D&D is so wildly popular again. Everyone's like, what could be the next Game of Thrones? I'm like, how about Game of Thrones before there's Game of Thrones? Conan. Right? Like, all these motherfuckers are just jocking Howard when they started making these worlds we love. I can't yeah. believe that Conan isn't just the number one most popular IP. I think Hellraiser, you find someone who... Hellraiser's getting tons of shit now. So, yeah, there's I think a lot you of. you got to find someone who's going to love it as much as. who's going to love Conan the way it deserves. Are there people Personally. that don't love Conan the way he deserves? Of course there are. That's sad. That's sad, guys. Sad. People are sheep. That's sad. And if we had Conan, um, he would handle those people for us. <laughs> That's my yeah, pitch. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think this is a this is a fascinating time. I'm excited to see the animated stories that do come out of it and what we get. Um I guess in 2021. I don't think anything's coming out next week. That's for sure. Um, but, you know, if you are a Rick and Morty fan, that comes back uh, this Sunday, I think. So that's pretty cool. I know you're not, but I'm not going to tell you you should be because I believe everyone you know has already told you that. I watch I watch anime, dude. That's like my TV shows. I watch no TV shows that aren't anime, essentially. Fair enough. It happens. It happens uh, to me. <laughs> Guys, we hope you are staying safe out there. We hope everyone is good and healthy. Thank you again for listening to the show. What comic book do you want to see turned into an animated movie? Maybe they'll do it in 2021. Maybe Griffey and I will write it. We already wrote the DC unauthorized starring Meatloaf. I mean, Meatloaf. Loaf. You're welcome. You're welcome, world. <laughs> in any sense, guys, we hope you're okay. Please rate, review, and subscribe to our show. Tell everyone about it. Tell us how you feel about it. Even if you don't like it, I don't really care. As long as there's a review available, I will read it. And I, will I care. It. Say nice things. No one wants to read your shitty comments. Everybody wants to make shitty comments, though, which is why I implore you. <laughs> That's why we have YouTube now. <laughs> That's why we have YouTube and Twitter. Guys, also YouTube, of course, Nerd Alchemist, plural with an S. Uh, check us out. And then, of course... Go to Phil Malcolm's podcast, please. It's getting so good. Next month, the pod edits genetics. We're going to just watch a bunch of movies about people that are good at splicing genes, yet somehow constantly fuck up. I don't they know. They can very do fascinating. it. They, they, they were too obsessed with whether or not they could. They didn't stop to ask if they should. Fair enough. I like it. Uh, again, stay safe, folks. From the Long Box Sessions, I'm Alex Dandino. And I'm Josh Griffey.